Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. Today is the 11th of August and uh, it was a hell of an interesting day. And um, it was the worst kind of day for uh, non directional trading where you have a gap up into a crash in ID and then a big down move with random volatility of 50 points and uh, in either direction. And more or less, uh, we, we dipped quite a bit. And then from there, we had short covering because huge amount of calls shorted into the down move and those calls had to be bought back. And more or less, I mean, from close to close basis, doesn't look like much, but it was a very tricky day. Uh, I got, I was fine. I managed the trade all right. In between, I took a slightly uh, ballsy uh, trade where I was trying to buy the dip, but I tried to do it too early. It went against me. And once again, I had to manage from there. At one point, I was uh, close to down like 0.75% and uh, it was approaching that 1% of capital mark. And from there, um, the only reason I stayed in the trade was because it's a Wednesday and it's very much in my favor. In today's video, I've also covered um, why it is that I trade on certain days and certain days I don't trade. And uh, a lot of people have been asking for that uh, whenever I sit out, why, why are you sitting out? What's exactly the reasoning for it? So that being said, it was all right. At the end of the day, I more or less closed uh, slightly below cost. And uh, yeah, tomorrow being expiry uh, should be should be an interesting uh, day. I will catch you then. I hope you had a good trading day. Have a great day ahead. Take care. Bye-bye. Want to meet like-minded traders and discuss option strategies, suggestions and more? Just type in Discuss Nifty in your Telegram search box and join the friendly trader community. Good morning, ladies and gentlemen. The time is uh, 11.30 almost. My initial recordings got a little messed up. I'll just go over the trade for today. Anyway, the trade order book will be available in Telegram. My initial view was slightly bearish. So I sold the 16400 and 16150 strangle. But uh, very quickly, there was quite an expansion on the put side with the kind of sell off that we saw. Now, when we broke uh, yesterday's close, I rolled down my uh, calls to 16350. And uh, Towards this test of yesterday's low, I rolled down my calls to 16300. Now, here is where uh, I kind of made a mistake till there. It's fine. Management so far perfectly all right. Here, I into this up move, I was expecting uh, once again an aggressive buying back from 16200. So I actually moved up my puts to 16200 to be a little aggressive because into an IV expansion, taking credit can work out uh, well most of the time. But the fact that we once again then retested the low and broke, uh, that really started bleeding the puts. And um, so, yeah, both on the 16.150 and 16.200 ended up taking quite a hit. Uh, and uh, yeah, at that point, I had no option but to completely risk off on the put side. All said and done, um, down about less than 1% of the capital used to take this trade and uh, I mean initially itself I kept my position sizing lower by hedging super OTM just for bare minimum hedging benefit um, so that was a good call and now more or less I'm trailing a stop loss of about three and a half points so that is the approach and uh, the reason I fought here in fact instead of just taking the exit somewhere around here is because today's a witness day and being a witness day, invariably, it will eventually be in favor of uh, credit side trades because uh, tomorrow's expiry. So these options cannot hold too much value. But uh, yeah, I think um, except for this one move, which I think was fair enough. At that point, my view was, I wouldn't even call it a mistake. My view was potentially we will uh, get bought back uh, at least till 16 to 50. But that did not happen. And this kind of went. So. I don't have any uh, uh, thing that I have to close in the green at the end of every day. Now, if there is some short covering and starts exploding these calls, I will invariably um, take an exit. So if my exit is coming because of the call side, I'll probably get out um, around at a three point loss from where I am and likewise on the put side. So that's the plan for now. We'll keep you posted. Time is 11.30 and so far it's been a roller coaster considering that we're pricing in 100 points on an at the money straddle. We've initial move of almost close to 160, 70 points or so with quite a bit of 
volatility there as well. So he dipped 150 points, got bought by another 50 points and then got sold into by close to 100 points and now are getting bought 50 points. So it's been a little bit all over the place. But uh, yeah, all said and done, we'll keep you posted 11.30. So the thing is, there is insane amount of call writing that is taking place all day. And uh, what I'm kind of like in the short term actually concerned about now right now um, is these 16300 calls experiencing some kind of short covering up move. I would prefer that we, uh, because of the kind of call writing that has happened, there is always a potential for the risk is always now on the upside, not on for the downside. Um, and that that is a bigger area of concern. What I'm thinking is uh, on the index itself, I will consider. So yesterday I tweeted about this, some portfolio hedging kind of trades. And there are a few ways to do it. One is to buy long term put options. That is, if you want a relatively passive approach, you can take some amount like two to five percent of whatever your portfolio is worth and put that into long put options, which are very much later dated, like um, maybe December of 22 or 23. So I don't plan on doing that. Instead, I'll create a few spreads uh, on a shorter time frame, so maybe December of this year, to have a slightly bearish view. Not a heavily bearish view, just a slightly bearish view. So in case that we continue to consolidate here or um, stay below 17,000 or head lower uh, in this particular year, then it should protect me a little bit on the downside against my portfolio. So yeah, we'll keep you posted. Time is 11.50 and as of now, um, all this call writing is a little concerning. There are of course a lot of strategy positions at 16200 which is now trading at we can say roughly it's just below 120 and uh, yeah we'll keep you posted. Okay so as usual uh, it has to be always a pain never never an easier trading range and oh, slowly we're now seeing an up move which is starting to expand these calls now the way i see it if these calls go to 32 which is just two points from here there is some kind of short covering explosion so in this 32 to 35 range um can really explode them so that is going to then hurt me on the reversal it's the thing is the pricing options is such that uh, into a directional move the only way you manage it if you're Purely on the credit side is by taking additional credit and then reversals such as this will invariably hurt you but with the cooling off in the put side IV it has partly benefited my position I'm not going to be moving my puts up um, rather my approach here will be um, if this expands to about 32 and starts to uh, head higher from there I will just square this up and sell 16 350 uh, call and uh, from here, if my mark to market starts to take a hit by uh, what is four points from here, basically, then I will just exit the position. So trailing in closer as we go. We'll have to see if, I mean, it's still at 87 lakh. It's maximum call side open interest from what matters at least. And uh, yeah, we'll keep you posted. Okay, the time is 1.12. We are... We made this up move from the low. We're consolidating here. And potentially, we can continue this up move if there is some kind of short covering triggered. I'm looking at how uh, people are reacting to the 16200 call. And so far, that doesn't seem to be any kind of panic to cover it. But around here, so around like 77 to 80. So this this range, this breaks, it would be annoying because that would then trigger sh short covering on the upside. And I have no intention of taking additional call credit because for now I'm going to stick with the view that these guys are sticking to. Where are you? That these guys are sticking to that upside limited, and we're going to consolidate here or head lower. So that's more or less what I'm working with. Uh, same time, my uh, I'll have a four point exit criteria as it is. So yeah, four points from here is kind of like something I have to. So this is that has to be part directionality in this. The rate at which these puts will explode if we once again test the day's low will be huge. This will double. So, fair enough. 
that being the case uh, i got a question on telegram uh, as to there are days that i don't read on and generally post on twitter as to why i'm not trading on those days how do i uh, arrive at that what is the logic and reasoning behind it i'll cover that uh, right now so i just want to go over one concept really quickly the market tends to overreact to everything so when, what i mean by that is when there is an expectation of huge volatility right when i is really high invariably historically the actual volatility that will play out will be lower uh, than what the expected volatility is which is why in high ie people like to do stuff like short strategies because it offers very good risk reward the potential gain to potential uh, loss is uh, uh, in favor of gain so that that's how you look at it and similarly when iv is extremely low when the risk that's being priced in the market is close to nothing there will invariably be uh, the actual volatility playing out more than whatever is the implied volatility so this is how market reacts to oh there is huge risk or oh okay there's absolutely no risk so this is one it's always an extreme market works with extremes now uh, currently we are in a low iv environment and we're in low IV environment, but however, because we're trading weekly options and that on an intraday basis, it's not too big a concern. And where, which days are going to be the best for me now? I'll go which days are going to be. Obviously, expiry is going to be the best for me, and the worst is going to be from Monday. I'll tell you why. So the closer an option is to expiry, the more it can provide it. The entire market doesn't go anywhere in the entire day as a value of what it opens at to what it can lose that will be highest on Thursday. Like for example, uh, let's say the same thing on a Friday, you have an OTM option trading at 100 hypothetically and market doesn't move anywhere. Then maybe that loses like 10 points, right? 10 points is 10% of what it opened at uh, roughly. Whereas the same thing, let's say happens on a Wednesday and OTM options trading at 20 and market goes nowhere. It will head to 10, which is 50% of what it opened at. Now, why is this important? This is important because and many people don't know. So if you follow my mouse, a theta decay curve is like this, right? So the rate at which um, an option falls off in value given no movement in the underlying will be maximum towards the end. So Thursday is obviously the best. Second would be Wednesday. This is one day before Thursday. Next day options are going to expire. People who are long those options, if nothing is happen with, happening with them, they will get rid of it. Now, Friday actually is the best after Wednesday. And there is the reason for this. And if you go by the Black Scholes model and all people say there's no weekend decay and whatnot, there's a huge fall off in options prices on Friday if there is no movement in the underlying because a lot of people who are holding long options, majority of people who trade options smartly, right? Um, there are very good options buyers out there. Um, they will not carry unless they have very high conviction over the weekend. Um, they, they, they won't. And in fact, majority of options traders who are trading short term options, not very long-term options as buyers because long-term buyers will hold positions uh, over larger time frames they won't look at intraday movements for that um, not too much at least so people who are doing short-term option trading they won't carry over the weekend so because they're exiting there is actually a huge benefit on friday it is represented as the cooling off of iv and monday morning there's an iv spike or whatever but friday is basically comes there monday tuesday invariably in low iv environments i always shy away from trading there are situations in which I will trade um, on Monday if there isn't much of a fall off from the weekend and there is still good premium available and I'll address what is good premium and bad premium. Um, then I might trade on a Monday. On a Tuesday, if there really isn't uh, much premium, and there's uh, once again a big overnight fall off. So if there's a big overnight fall off from over the weekend, I will not trade Monday. If there is another big fall off from Monday to Tuesday, I will not trade it Tuesday. So what do I consider good premium? What do I consider bad premium? Look, that keeps changing depending on the current volatility environment. Currently, what in, is in my comfort zone, what I think would be good premium enough meat so that in case something goes wrong, I'm able to manage it, would be something like on Friday, having between 220 and 230 rupees in the short straddle. If you know the short straddle price, you can more or less uh, ascertain what will be the ODM options pricing. So you can be like, okay, if short straddle trading at 100, maybe 200 points triangle trading in something like 40 to 45, maybe 300 points trading in something like 35. So you can get that. You just need to work off short straddle pricing. And uh, so on a Friday, I would like something which is to be 220 or above that. But even if it's slightly below that, I don't particularly mind. If it's a lot below like uh, 200, 190, there's no way I'm going to trade that day. Similarly, on Monday, I would want short straddle pricing on Monday to be something like at least 180, 170 to 180 would be ideal. Tuesday morning when we open, I want at least be 140, 
150 for it to make sense to trade and uh, on a wednesday because once again as i'm getting to wednesday my risk reward is improving so even though there won't be that much value the potential fall off as a percentage of what it opened at will be higher so on a wednesday um, even if the short start is pricing in something like 120 130 that would be nice uh, but anything which is much better let's say it opens at something like 110 or 100 i'm not going to be trading wednesday also um and Thursdays, obviously, if we open a, if the short straddle opens at something like uh, 90 in this current environment. So people are like, OK, for this environment, how do you decide? Just look at the past few weeks. Just look at the past few weeks. Look at the actual validity. How, how are options being priced at that point and how did it work out? Since I trade every single day and it's the same days always, I tend to feel comfort at certain price levels and not at certain price levels. That's more or less a summary of uh, how um, I trade on different days why I choose not to trade at times and uh, yeah I hope that was useful now these calls are continuing to expand the up move is coming from a mix of things I will probably let this bleed till about 30 anything beyond 30 I will just exit the trade is what I'm thinking because beyond 30 there is a lot of room for expansion if we get bought back all the way to 16300 that would just be um, completely ridiculous but very much possible it's just another 50 points from here so we'll keep you posted time is 120 and we are now seeing an up move which is coming from bank nifty as well as reliance reliance now heading to the day's high we'll keep you posted you still got close to two hours left okay plan was to wait for a slight dip to move my calls up I'm risking off now in the red candle. I made a video yesterday on how this sheet works. Well, anyone who wants to check that out. But basically what I'm doing is now that I've um, benefited from the cool off in IV and I'm, my trade is kind of heavily uh, delta negative because an up move will explode these calls. Like it's not like they're going to go up slowly. If they go to 30, 32, quick. 20 point candle can explode them to like 45, 50, like 20, 30 points. Like just as we're approaching because already market is like, okay, we're heading back to 16, 300. It will be the rate at which the demand comes in. That will be the problem. The rate at which the demand comes in to buy this position back will be huge. And it's a threat. So I don't want to have to deal with that. And uh, it's a smart decision wherein I just now um, even if there is a continued up move, yes, this 350 will expand, but not anywhere close to how much this 300 will blow up. And yes, into a down move now, I don't have the safety of having so much credit from my uh, put side. But now that we've made a low and then once again respected that range and pulled back from there, the confidence of people who will buy the dip will be more. So now that will act as a support. So basically here, shorted like anything there would you see this candle well that tended to be support we, we got bought um the reason for that was people will be like oh the, the, there should be support here that broke the guys who went long here also exited the position right so now you have sellers also who are selling the buyers who bought also they're also selling that is what led to this once again yesterday's low people are like, like we can buy yesterday's low 16 to 100 maximum both side open interest also when you're buying the dip you can either sell a put option or buy future go long call right so they tried that once again pulled it back by 50 points but that also got sold into selling was good enough that it pulled it back to their level now the guys who went long here previously they also go short which means if they had previously bought a call option they're going to sell that call option if they had sold a put option they're going to buy that put option back if they had gone long in future they're going to sell that future and then that is what led to here but whatever after here selling pressure stopped and they were like okay i have to get back to normal so now if we go here again once again until here people will try to buy in fact until here people might even try to buy here is where people will actually try to buy if that breaks then there'll be further downside but it doesn't matter to me anymore because if this put option does expand if this expands then i'm still trailing my um four point exit which now no longer will be a four point exit because potentially on this i can gain in what four points four to five points so i'll trail a stop loss of two points because uh, now my potential reward is reduced i will also reduce my risk so uh, that's how it is a very eventful badness day uh, definitely more volatile than what the pricing would have indicated so
Okay, one more thing I will consider doing now is I'll wait for a day if I want this 15160 put to expand to something like 15 ideally and then I will move my puts to 15, 16, uh, 150. If it doesn't, if it goes down to 12 and this expands to like 18 and a half, then I will just roll into it anyway. Might also meet my exit criteria, but let's wait and watch. We continue to now head higher and more and more of these 16200 calls are getting unwound. Okay, the time is 2.08 and basically what would have happened now is once again this same juncture since we didn't have a continued up move, those who created longs probably here and here starting to unwind. Now that is leading to a slight expansion of the 16150 put, but that's fine. Uh, 16350 put has given up a little bit for now. It's more or less mark to market perspective didn't really make much of a change. If we continue to slide here, which is basically like here, right? So once again, you see here, wherever there's a lot of congestion, those, for example, those who have sold here will start booking profit here and, uh, same thing, support resistant concept. Right? So this will now act as a support. If that breaks, or rather, I don't really care what happens there. If this expands to 1920, I'm squaring it off immediately. And uh, at that point, I will either sell the 16100 put if it has um, expanded quite a bit. If not, I will just be exiting the entire position. So yeah, last uh, one hour, uh, 20 minutes. And in that, given that not much is happening and as far as open interest is concerned, there are short started positions around 16,250 that have built up um, mostly in the last one hour uh, as of today. Now, overall, if you see the uh, maximum call side open interest, 16,300, maximum put side open interest, 16,200, there are short started positions on both uh, triangles, inverted triangles, all that, and 16,250. So uh, I would think we would end the day today somewhere very close to 16,250. And... Uh, at this point, once again, trailing stop loss, just two points. And because we are, I'm at a benefit from now, once again, cooling off on the put side, about 1,30,000 is where I will just exit if I'm at a negative 1,30,000 mark to market. Hell of a day. Uh, it's not over yet. So we'll keep you posted. Still got an hour, 20 minutes to go. Okay. Uh, I took the exit mainly because there is about 30 minutes of trading time. There's a good chance we'll close towards. Um, 16,250. A little bit of the put side IV would have fallen off and I uh, sort of waited for this 15,250 to come. But the problem is this uh, this confluence zone here, right? If we break here, there will be undue expansion on the put side and there's really not much uh, premium in my calls to deal with that. This was expanding to something like 17 plus and these calls were trading at like 8.5. So let me see what price I exited. So I exited roughly at around 15.59 and 9.25, which is fine. Like I, what kind of weird fantasies you have to close in a green number. And for that, for that matter, my other market mark is in green. But yeah, so no smell loss. I call it a break even day, slightly worse, obviously. But uh, I think also and none, I'm happy with how I managed the day. This was difficult. To deal with especially because i mean close close doesn't look so bad but uh, it was quite difficult and the reason i fought it uh, rather than taking an early exit if you notice at one point i was down not quite one percent but close to one percent the reason i still fought the day is because it's a wednesday it by default is in my favor and if you notice in at every point the idea is to um reduce my direction of uh, reduce my risk in the direction of the moment so Except for this one place where I tried to get a little, uh, so exactly here, right? So where I tried to sort of, I think of the second candle, this candle where I tried to short the 16200 put for a quick, uh, you know, pullback V-shape recovery thing and got burnt here. Except for that, I think everything else was managed in direction of the risk. Of course, the one time I managed it against the direction of the market, I got burnt. So yay, but all said and done, um, an all right day. I, I wouldn't have too many things that I would want to work on from this. I tweeted earlier also about how a 1% move in your position, if it is making you freak out and do the wrong things in managing it, probably means you're sizing it wrong. Today, I wasn't at an advantage because um, if you see for the past few days with the low premiums, I'm trading with lower sizing 
and uh, like lesser hedging benefit so that way my uh, hedges don't lose me much and i'm trading a smaller quantity so i'm able to far more easily manage it than generally if i were trading what sizing i am used to so yeah i hope you had a good trading day could have been tricky but i will catch you tomorrow for the expiry and i'll go over today's data and see so right now tomorrow's expiry is looking like 16200 maximum put side open interest 16300 maximum call side open interest and uh, let's see how much that most likely will close for hmm. most likely going to close at around 47 47 48 so we'll see or look most likely i'll be taking the same strikes tomorrow also 16150 put and uh, 16350 call into the down mode the reason i exited rather than waiting for the last half an hour of dk which can be really good on a wednesday is mainly because of this this is tricky you almost certainly expect it to be pulled back to uh, 16250 but if it doesn't then there's a whole world of pain that you have to now experience in the last moment so yeah the potential reward and the risk both in the last few minutes is always on the higher side this put has now crashed so from where i've exited three points but uh, i'm still happy that i took the exit it won't have been it won't have made too much sense to stay thank you so much for watching i will catch you tomorrow have a great day bye bye thank you for watching please post any questions you have in the comment section also do not forget to like and share the video and subscribe to the channel to find us on twitter telegram and facebook Use the username NiftyBN. Also, we post some of our trades to the community tab. So do not forget to check that from time to time.